Hello, I'm Chef Isaacs of the Barley Mule Catering Company. We're coming to you from southeastern Kentucky today, and we're going to be showing you how to cook with bourbon. The bourbon capital of the world is located in Kentucky, and if you don't drink bourbon, we're going to show you how to cook with it. Just to give you a little background on me, uh, I was a chef uh, for the Department of Tourism in Kentucky. Uh, I incorporated bourbon in their cooking there. We fed 300,000 people a year there. I've also owned a restaurant called Streetside Cafe in Brea, Kentucky, where we made an ultimate burger house. And we did burgers, burgers in all the 50 states. Another thing about me is that through my cookbook sales that we have, is we feed veterans. We take the proceeds out of that cookbook and we feed veterans all across the US. Uh, that is part of like a philanthropy for us uh, that we take care of others through service to the food, through giving back. Uh, I have been recognized by a distiller in Kentucky for my work with uh, veterans. You know, and I've cooked uh, a little bit of everything. I'm a very versatile chef. If you come with me and you want something, I'll find a way to make it. Uh, I did not go to culinary school. I wasn't classically trained. I was trained through working in kitchens, uh, chefs yelling at you. And I've done every part of it from washing dishes to bussing tables to waiting to cooking, to managing and owning. It's been a beautiful uh, process to do. It's been a pleasure of doing it. I've never considered this work in any way. I just love cooking. And as long as you pour the love you have in your cooking, you're gonna do well. For this cookbook, it shows people that if you think you cannot cook, I can show you that you can. On this episode of Eat This TV, we're gonna be showcasing today three distinct recipes that shows you the versatile of cooking with bourbon. First, we're gonna show you a beet and goat cheese salad that's made with a bourbon vinaigrette, and we're gonna make that on as we do the show. The second thing we're gonna make is a pan seared uh, with a bourbon glazed chicken that is paired with roast asparagus and baby potatoes. And then we're gonna end it with a great pie, a chocolate bourbon pecan pie that really has the impact flavor that bourbon brings to you, but is not overpairly sweet, but will leave a great impression on you. Now let's get started cooking with bourbon. In a pot, we add one stick of butter, one cup of granulated sugar, and then one cup of uh, light Cairo syrup. And you will cook this until it smooths out. As you see, it's smoothed out in here. Then you let it rest for five minutes. And as you're letting it rest, you can take your pie crust, which uh, we just use a common pie crust. If you can't make your own, just use a store-bought pie crust. We will take some milk chocolate chips and add in the bottom of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use about a cup we're going to spread these along the bottom of it, kind of even them out. You know, so it's going to look like this. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to take the mixture that you've got. As you see, I've, I've already started letting it cool. And then we're going to take four eggs and you will blend uh, your four eggs up. You will take one uh, teaspoon of vanilla. Uh, two tablespoons of bourbon, and that's where the love comes in. You will take this and you will mix these up. You want to make sure you get a good mixture with the bourbon and the eggs. And one thing that is important, when you're adding your egg mixture to your melted sugar and your butter, it's important that you allow the five minutes for it to cool down so that it does not cook your eggs in it. And as you see, we've already started letting this cool down now. We'll just finish up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, we're gonna check our butter sauce here, and we're gonna slowly incorporate these eggs in, and we're gonna whisk quickly. So you can see it just starts to become a beautiful layout here. And you can see the butter as it comes along, and all the sugars, and then the eggs are not cooked in it because we let it cool down. We'll move this over to here. And now what you're gonna add is your two cups of chopped pecans. You're gonna add them into this mixture. And then we're gonna pour over into the pie crust. 
What I like to do is try to make sure I get as much pecans as I can in this pie. And you can see it just kind of makes a beautiful crust and you want it to be full. And then one of the things I like to do, even though this is a beautiful pie on its own, we also want to make sure that we decorate it. Uh, one of the parts of cooking is a visual effect that you always have on your food. So I always take whole pecans and I just start putting them around the pie just like this. Uh, one of the things about cooking with bourbon is that Kentucky is the bourbon capital of the world. We have many unique distilleries there that kind of showcase their own flavors and how that they distill their bourbon. Uh, the bourbon barrels are made from oak, white oak trees that are uh, processed in uh, Kentucky. Uh, the bourbon, as you know, the bar uh, barrels are charred. And then depending on the charring, depending on the recipe of the bourbon, then that what makes your distinct flavor for each distillery. This pie is a favorite from my oldest son, uh, Zachary. Uh, my son Elijah loves this too, and he has a love for cooking. Uh, bourbon is not his thing, but uh, he has learned that his mother pretty much puts bourbon in every single thing that she cooks. And he always says, Mom, if you put bourbon in uh, deviled eggs, I'm done. And I said, I think I can do it. So, you know, as we're going around this pie, we're just taking time to really just decorate it because you want it to be look beautiful for guests, uh, to showcase what you can do kind of like this. You can even, I always put more pecans on mine because the more pecans in a pecan pie, the better. The chocolate that's in it will accent the flavors of the bourbon and the pecans in it. Uh, the bourbon that we're using today, when you cook with it, you know, as we've cooked it off, it becomes not a raw bourbon, but a cooked bourbon. What this bourbon does is when you cook with it, it gives a sweet caramel note to it. And that's what you're looking for. When you're baking with bourbon, you want bourbons, the cheese bourbons that have a smaller mellow taste to them, not a strong oaky taste to them. And this is what uh, I use. Uh, the 1620 uh, Distillery are fabulous people to work with. They're family owned. They're seven uh, generation distillers. Um, and they really bring a great bourbon to the market. I'm trying to find me some more whole pecans here. Okay. Then what we'll do is you can take this pie like this right here. And then what we need to do is we need to put it into an oven. And we'll be right back. To this afternoon, what we're gonna be preparing for you is a pan seared chicken breast uh, with a bourbon marinade or a bourbon sauce that goes over it. Uh, this chicken is sauteed lightly till it's done. You want your chicken to make sure the internal tip of chicken should be 165 degrees. The, to, in order to cook chicken well, what you wanna do is continually turn it because that way it cooks through on both sides. You know and you're getting the, the flavor on it. Also, while that's cooking today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about what we're plating with. We have used a, a baby potato, just a, just a white potato, uh, that we have uh, salt water boiled, and then we've added spices on it. And then we have roasted asparagus that's in the oven that has olive oil and, and butter on it, and then garlic, salt, and black pepper. Uh, one of the things you can add to it if you like, you can add uh, grated Parmesan over it, uh, to give it a little bit more color and a little bit more flavor to it, but it's excellent just the way it is and it pairs with the chicken very well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring our dish over here. We're gonna move our, just a little bit, and we're gonna take our chicken and we're gonna layer it in here. We're gonna lay this chicken in here so it really showcases how it looks in this pan. Okay, then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, along with our uh, pan seared chicken breast and our meal is we're gonna add the bourbon glaze to it. We're gonna show you another way that cooking with bourbon brings great flavor when you make it into a sauce. So we're gonna add a half a cup of pineapple juice. We're gonna take one clove of minced garlic. And then we're gonna put this over the heat. 
and stir. We're going to add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. We're going to add a teaspoon of soy sauce, a half a cup of brown sugar. The brown sugar is what shows the love and helps showcase the bourbon too in it. And then at last, we're going to add some molasses. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook this sauce down and it takes a while to cook a sauce down like this because so, you want it to thicken up. And if you could just smell through TV, then you would understand how fabulous this is. We're gonna cut our heat down just a little bit here. And you can smell the, the vinegar in this. You can smell the molasses that's in it and the bourbon that's in it. And those three combined really make a, a flavorful impact. And garlic is one of the spices that is very versatile to use. You can put it in any pasta dishes, chicken dishes, fish dishes, vegetables, mashed potatoes. In cooking with bourbon, uh, I wrote a cookbook. This cookbook is called the Twisted Southern Cookbook. Uh, this cookbook uh, is mostly featured around my sons and the things that I have made through the years with bourbon that they love. And uh, Zach and Elijah are my son's name, along with my husband, Rick. And they really have encouraged me to cook more and to do this. So in making this cookbook, what we did was every cookbook that we sell, we take the proceeds off that cookbook and we cook for veterans. We cook for veterans all across the U.S. And then they come to Kentucky and they uh, hunt our farms. And then we also prepare meals for them and cook for them. Uh, the pie that I made earlier is uh, one that we often bake for them to take back. And it is also featured in this cookbook. You can go to barleymule.com and you can find the cookbooks on there for sale. As you see, it's starting to cook down some. It will thicken. Making a sauce can be a really slow process because you've got to allow it to thicken up. You know, it, it's kind of like a gravy, so to speak. You know, uh, your gravy that you make can be thick or thin depending on your flour or your milk that you add to it. I'll give you a, a little information on Kentucky. One of the things that's made in Kentucky that, it, that people seem to love and that when we have veterans come to eat is we make something called chocolate gravy. We make a homemade pan of biscuits that's cooked in a cast iron skillet that's in the stove. And then we make this wonderful chocolate gravy that we pour over it. And we fry eggs, we have bacon and sausage. And a lot of times after the hunt is over for the day, they'll come to the house and I'll have this meal cooked for them and they'll sit down and they'll talk about how they've never ate chocolate gravy. As you can see again, it is starting to thicken up. Now sauces can be as thick or thin as you want. I prefer a sauce not too thick, but not too thin. We're almost to the consistency that we want because you don't want your sauce to overpower your chicken, your flavor of chicken. It's important that, like I say, your vegetables, your potatoes, whatever that you use as your sides needs to also speak for themselves. And while this is cooking, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back uh, and we are, as you see, the uh, sauce is starting to thicken. We're gonna turn the heat off of it now and we're gonna just let the air go out of it and we're gonna keep stirring it. As you can see, it becomes a thicker sauce. Now you can cook this down even more to make it more condensed, but I like to kind of not it to be so thick, but to be more like a glaze. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this sauce and we're just gonna spoon it over the chicken. What we're doing here is really just showcasing the chicken, the flavors of the chicken, but you get both in it. And then if you want to, you can frizzle a little bit over your asparagus. And 
and there you go. You have a beautiful dish that has got a pan seared chicken that's seasoned well, some baby potatoes and roasted asparagus. And that is a very healthy meal option for you. In today's time, as we age and as we grow, we need to make sure that the vegetables and uh, meats and proteins that we eat are speaking to us and that they're healthy and that we learn that uh, different flavors and vegetables and fruits will help us in so many ways. Uh, less processed food and more natural healthy foods. Okay, so we're gonna be showing you another way that you can incorporate bourbon into your cooking. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a field of greens with arugula and romaine, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a salad with it. Now, one of the things about making a good salad is using good ingredients. Using ingredients that don't necessarily you think would go in a salad. What we're gonna use is we're gonna use chopped beets. Uh, beets is a superfood. You can eat them pickled, you can eat them canned, but they're really good. I would dice these beets up and then what you do is you just spread this over the salad. And it brings a lot of color to it. It's gonna bring great flavor to it when we add the dressing to it. You know, and, and this salad doesn't have a whole lot of ingredients, but it has a whole lot of flavor and that's what you want. Uh, we always make sure that we use uh, real leaf greens. They bring the best flavor, the best nutrient value to you. So you wanna use those. And then we use a goat cheese, just a creamy chevved goat cheese. And we'll crumble that over the top. You know, still, like I said, it's just a very basic salad, but it's a good salad. It's good to eat. Uh, it's very light. You know, but I do put on the ingredients on it, you know. All right. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a protein to it. We're going to add walnuts to it. So some good whole walnuts that get on it. We're going to put those, put those around the salad. And as you see, see how beautiful that looks. That's a beautiful salad. It's a simple to be made. Now, for the best part of the salad, even though you could eat it just like this and it's very healthy, we're gonna use and make a bourbon vinaigrette that is just a basic uh, vinaigrette, but it has great flavor to it. You're gonna take honey. A fourth a cup of honey is what you're gonna use. You're gonna use a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and make sure that you use apple, apple cider vinegar. That's very important. Do not use a white distilled vinegar. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna just roll this around and whisk it up until it makes a sauce, until it makes your dressing. You're gonna add your bourbon. You want a teaspoon of bourbon in it. One of the things about using a bourbon in its raw form is finding the perfect bourbon to use. You want a bourbon that is a sweeter note, a lighter note, like 1620 bourbon is here. Uh, it, it's a really versatile bourbon. You can use it in so many things as the dishes we've done today. And as you see, it just makes a real beautiful sal uh, salad dressing on here. Okay, and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna just kind of drizzle it over it. See how that is? You don't want it to overpower the salad. You just want to give it a little bit in there. It doesn't cover up your green, so you're still getting that beautiful effect that you like and the flavor that you love. And there you go. Now that is a beautiful salad there for you. It's made with a bourbon vinaigrette dressing. You can add some spices in this dressing if you want. Uh, you can add a little garlic if you want that kind of flavor. Uh, you can use some gra uh, cracked black pepper in it, some uh, sea salt in it to kind of spice it up more. But I really like the cleanliness of just the bourbon straight in it with it. And this is your salad. So as you see today, uh, these are the dishes that we've prepared for you. Uh, I am Chef Isaacs with the Barley Mule Catering Company located in southeastern Kentucky. We're, on this episode of Eat This TV, uh, we have done book cooking with bourbon. Uh, as you see, we made a beautiful chocolate bourbon pecan pie. We've made a bourbon vinaigrette uh, goat cheese and beet salad. And then we've done a uh, chicken sauce. It's a chicken breast with a sauce on it and asparagus with baby potatoes. 
Uh, it's healthy eating, except for the pie, of course, but it just makes a beautiful presentation. It is something if you have friends and family over, you can prepare the simple dishes for them. And uh, you can find uh, these recipes in the Twisted Southern Cookbook. You can find that on the website at thebarleymule.com.